Hey guys, so in the last video we left off um, with our HTML file looking like this and the style CSS uh, file looking like this. So um, you'll see why we structured the list elements in this order uh, after we start organizing the actual calculator. So what we'll do is we'll actually style the calculator now and give it like some, some structure. So um, let me just differentiate between the reset so this is the CSS reset and then our CSS uh, will go below here. Okay, so let's start off with giving the body some nice color. So the body is this whole uh, document that we'll see in the HTML file. So um, we're going to give it a background color of hashtag 9480C7. Uh, and this is going to be like a nice purple color. So now if you reload it, we have this purple color in the background. Uh, okay, so now let's get started. So what we'll do is we're going we're gonna to take this whole, all of these numbers, and put them into um, sort of like a rectangle, and put that rectangle in the middle, so you can start seeing the structure of the calculator. So um, our calculator will be within the, this is our calculator, within the, it'll be within the container div. So we'll do container. And so, you know, you specify IDs with the hashtag, and classes with a period. So ID. And then let's give it a width of 440 pixels. And you, so you can feel free to mess with these options. So for example, you can make the background color like yellow if you want, and you can play around with it. This is a really bad color. But yeah, you can feel free to play around with it. It's just something that I came up with that looked kind of nice. So I'll just uh, show you um, the code I used. So margin zero auto will center this container. Uh, let's give it a background color of white. FFF. Uh, we'll give it some, so I'll show you that in a second. Uh, okay, so we'll do font family Helvetica, and then uh, that's it for now. Okay, so now if we reload this here, so we have this, this uh, area now that will serve as our calculator. Uh, so let's make this a little nicer. So I'll add some properties that aren't necessary, but they just make it look a bit nicer. So we'll give it a border. A pix solid, and then this color that I just got from Photoshop, seven seven six six nine D. Uh, we'll push the margin down a little from the top, and then we'll give it a nice rounded edge. Let's give it nine pixels, and then do I have a padding? No. Let's, so the way this looks now is like this, but we're gonna give it some padding so that the um, elements aren't touching the edge. So we'll just give it a padding of like uh, 20 pixels. Okay, so now it looks a little nicer. You see we have this nice uh, outline for the calculator. Okay, so uh, the next thing is, let's see how we can do this. Uh, so let's, let's organize the list elements so you can see why I ordered them this way. So what we're gonna do now is this whole buttons ID, so we can actually right click in here and if you select buttons you can see that it's this whole container so what we're going to do is each list element is going to be floated left in this container and we're going to try and make it so that we have four per line uh, and you'll see what i mean by this in a second so let's target uh the buttons now so container is an idea class idea of buttons buttons overflow because we're going to be floating elements we need to have an overflow property on the parent so and then font size we'll make the list elements 15 okay so now let's actually get to the buttons container buttons and then each list element okay so we're going to float it left uh, we'll give it a background a background of this is another random color I chose on Photoshop DAF1 <clears throat> uh, and then width 23% uh, height let's give it 80 pixels and then text align center and then to center okay so now let's see how this looks so far okay and so now you can see here we have because each um, uh, the width of each list is 23%, we can fit four on a line. So you can actually make this 
25% and it'll fit evenly, but then we can't have any spacing between the buttons because as, as soon as you add a space, um, four elements won't fit on a row and then it'll drop down to the next one. So we make it 23 to account for the margins. And so we can do that like this. Uh, we'll do margin bottom 10 pixels and then margin right 11 pixels. So these are the numbers I arrived at when making the application, but you can, you know, feel free to change them around. We'll give it some nice border, uh, a rounded border, and then cursor pointer, which will uh, give it a nice thing, a nice, um, the mouse will change when you hover over it. And then the last thing is we'll give it a box shadow. So <clears throat> the box shadow will give it a nice effect of uh, looking like a button. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So zero pixels, three pixels, one pixel, and then nine C eight B B D. So this first um, number represents the offset from the top, or sorry, from the um, how it's going to be offsetted from the left. This one is from the top. This is how um, the width of it, and then this is the color. So now if we reload it, you can see we have um, a border underneath it, so it looks like a button but for some reason it um, it broke to the next line. Uh, let me think, so margin right, mm, so margin right 10 pixels. Margin right, hmm, let me see, float left. Mm, border radius. Okay, so let's let's give it a margin of like five and see what happens. Okay, so now it now it works. Okay, um, okay, so we'll just you can actually inspect it in the console buttons. Where is it? Uh, each list. Okay, so here we can actually see at what point it breaks and it broke at eleven. So we'll we'll use eight pix eight pixels. Okay, so changes eight pixels. And now the other thing is you can see that the text isn't centered. And so we can fix that by adding a line height property and giving it um, a num the same <clears throat> the same number of pixels as the height. So now the numbers are centered. Okay. So this is what we have so far. Uh, okay. So you can actually see what this overflow auto property does. If you get rid of it, then the button the whole con the parent element isn't containing the actual uh, children. So you need to have some sort of overflow property. You can have a scroll so that if um, if the elements were bigger than the parent, you would have a scroll bar. Uh, okay, so now let's move on to, oh, actually, uh, I know why. Okay, so because we're adding the margin right of 11, what's actually happening is we don't want, so the elements that are in this last um, column, we don't want them to have a margin right because there's nothing for them to push to the right. So what we'll do is we'll do container buttons list, and then we'll do, um, so we're actually going to target each um, button in the last, um, in each, the end of each row. So it's one, two, three, and then here will be four, five, six, seven, eight, here will be eight. So it'll be four, eight, 12, 16. So we're actually getting every fourth uh, child. So we can do that using the nth child 4n. And then what we want is margin right 0 pixels. Uh, and let's give it a different background color so you can actually see each one being selected. So it's e5f1cd. And this code will be posted um, on this page so you can just copy it. And we'll make the font size a little bigger. And there you go. Okay, so now it's working properly. So what we did here was we're targeting these last elements and we're getting rid of the margin right property. So here, this element is pushing this element to the right by uh, 11 pixels. So these last elements don't need to push anything to the right. So we target each of these and you can see here they're overridden. So here margin right was 11, but here it's becoming zero. So this is a really cool thing you can do with uh, nth child. Uh, okay, so now we almost have this working. So let's give, the, give it the cool effect of when you press the button, it'll actually go down like a real button would. So we'll do that using the uh, active property. So each link when it's active. 
Uh, okay, so we'll do this the following way. We'll give it, so we gave it a box shadow here. We'll give it a box shadow and we'll get rid of the, um, we'll make everything zero. So it has no um, offset or width anymore for the box shadow. But now if you try this out, whoops, hold on. Binds list. Oh, I misspelled container. Whoops. Okay. So now if you click on it, it's uh, getting rid of it, but it's not actually being pressed down. It's not giving it that cool effect. So what we can do is we can do margin, top, something like three pixels. So now if you click it, you can see that the button goes down, but the problem is that it's pushing what's beneath it down too. So you can see this whole row is going down. So there are some clever ways to get around this. You can use something what's, uh, something that's called uh, Flexbox. Um, and there are some other um, ways to get around this. You can make this make each four elements their own row. And this way, each row isn't affected by the previous one. But we'll just get around this by doing... Uh, if So since we're pushing it down by three pixels, we'll just push the bottom... Uh, we'll just push the bottom up. So here you can see that for each list element we're pushing the bottom down by 10 pixels. So what we'll do is we'll just subtract 3 since we're adding 3 to the top. So we get 7 pixels. And so now it gives it that cool button effect. So what we're doing here is every time you click on a button up here we're adding 3 pixels of margin but from the bottom we're subtracting 3. So from the bottom, since we had 10 and we're subtracting 3, we get a margin top of 3 and a margin bottom of 7. And so now we have this cool effect of when you click a button. Uh, and some, let's quickly add, for the, to finish off this video, let's add the CSS for the top part of the calculator. Uh, okay, so what did we name it? So it's output. So we'll do container output. So once again, we need an overflow property because we'll be floating. And then we'll give it a margin bottom of 20 pixels. Uh, okay. And then, so we need to give this, uh, provide some CSS for the clear button and for the answer. So container output clear. So this is just gonna be a button. So we'll give it a width of 10%. We'll float it to the left. We'll give it a background. We'll make it like reddish. I found this color on Photoshop. So E9, E9. Oh, actually no. It'll be F6C4C4. C4. Okay, so this is sort of sort of red. Uh, text align center. Padding 15 pixels, zero. And then cursor pointer. Okay, so now when we reload it, here we have the button. So, um, so yeah, so we got the height. Instead of specifying a height, we were just able to add a padding. So this property right here, padding 15 pixels, this is shorthand for padding top and bottom and then left and right. So if we get rid of it, you can see what happens. Uh, okay, so now let's just add the CSS for the actual answer. So it'll be container output answer. So we'll float this left as well. This one will give it a background of like a grayish color. E9, E9, E9. Uh, so because we gave this a width of 10%, we'll give this one a width of 85. So 90 would be the equivalent of adding both of these to 100%, but we're going to be giving it some padding. So padding 0 and then 10 pixels on uh, both sides. Text align right. Uh, this one we specify a height, which will be actually let's not specify height and we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, and then line height 46 pixels. Actually, here we'll get rid of this. Okay, so if we just left it like this, whoops. Okay, so now we don't actually have anything, so we don't see anything within it. So let's add something into answer. So we'll edit this as HTML and we'll add some text in here. Hello. Click off. So now it appears. So because there's nothing in there um, and we didn't specify a height, then the element um, doesn't 
it appears not to exist. So we'll force a height to be specified and we'll give it a height of 46 pixels. And then to center the text, we also provide a line height. So now when you reload it, it's always here. And so you can play, the way, the way I got to 46 was I just played around with the uh, height in the console. So here you can actually increase it and then decrease it. Oops, what's going on? Oh, that's the line height, sorry. So you can actually give it a height and you can, you can see what happens, it's getting smaller. Uh, yeah, so now we have um, a calculator. It looks like a calculator. When you click on the buttons, nothing happens yet. We'll finish that off in the next video. Uh, the clear button doesn't act like a button. You can, you can add um, the same functionality as these buttons to this button, but I wanted to give it that 2D effect um, to keep it in line with uh, this uh, answer field. Okay, so in the next video, we'll uh, finish off the functionality of this calculator.